Football has an ownership problem. It seriously does. We've seen it before at clubs such as Scunthorpe United, Derby County, Bury, Bolton Wanderers. Of course, clubs have also gone out of existence. You look at the likes of Macclesfield Town, Scarborough, Darlington. Those clubs don't exist no more. And there's one reason for that. And that is bad ownership. Now, of course, AFC Bournemouth have been in this situation where the club was in serious problems in administration, the Winter Gardens, you name it. Everybody pulled together to save the club. And football has a very, very serious ownership problem at the moment. Now, as everybody will know, I was born in the Royal County of Berkshire and I wasn't born a Bournemouth fan. I was born watching Reading. Now, Reading Football Club played at the Old Elm Park at the time, and it was before I moved down in 2008 to the South Coast. But for that period of time, you know, I was sat there watching the Royals, and Reading, to be fair, were a club who were punching above their weight, you know, for a large portion of the successful years under John Medeski, because beforehand, Reading were very, very much similar to AFC Bournemouth, a club that spent most of his existence in the bottom two tiers. Yes, there was a spell in the second tier, but most of the time, it was in the bottom two tiers that Reading resided. John Medeski, of course, the club's famous owner, and of course, the stadium is called after him. It's called the Select Car Leasing Stadium now was the man who actually initiated that growth in the club and something that Reading fans will forever be thankful to him for. I want to take it back a little bit further as well, because John Medeski is a very, very interesting chap. So he bought the club in 1990 um, and... He did try and buy the club sometime beforehand. Reading fans are no, they're no strangers to having to protest for the survival of their club. The horrible times of Robert Maxwell. Now, what Robert Maxwell was trying to do was merge Oxford United and Reading together to form a new club called Thames Valley Royals. Thankfully, the Reading fans protested and won. John Medeski at the time actually offered Robert Maxwell, you know, a bid to take the club off his hands. And something he mentioned was when Robert Maxwell was alive, I offered him five pounds a share. When he fell off his boat, I got them for 10p. Funny old life, isn't it? Of course, Medeski took Reading, you know, to the edge of the premiership at the time, as it was known back in 1995. This club playing at Elm Park, a stadium which I'm sure all Reading fans would admit was not ready for the Premier League. It was probably a stadium, if it was still existed now, which you would probably expect to see in the National League. But he took this club to the edge of the Premiership. Don't get me wrong, Elm Park was an amazing stadium to actually grow up watching your hometown club football club in. And it had an atmosphere to it, very much like the old Dean Court. Now, why I mention all this um, is, for one thing, of course, I moved down in 2008 when Bournemouth was on its knees. Bournemouth was unable to pay creditors. Bournemouth were in administration. And it was only because of Jeff Mostyn that Bournemouth survived at that point. Now, a lot of you are probably thinking, well, why on a Bournemouth channel? Because we don't particularly like Reading very much. You know, I grew up, you know, in the, you know, not liking Oxford or Swindon. Those were the clubs that Reading were rivals with. To be honest, I don't hate any football club nowadays. And the reason why I bring that up is rivalry. Some people will say, well, don't care if this happens to that football club or that happens to that football club. But that's rubbish because to have a rivalry, you need a football club there and you need a football club that is there, the heart of the community, 
Bournemouth is the heart of Bournemouth's community. Reading is the heart of Reading's community. And therefore, I wanted to make a stand on this channel because, and it's not going to be the only video on this subject because as football fans, you know, regardless, you know, of my affiliation with Reading, which of course is strong, and I've always been honest about that. I've always been honest about that. No football club's fans should be going through what Reading fans should at this moment in time. Now, what I want to do is I want to look further into Dai Yong, who, of course, is the owner. We'll come on to what's happened since and the fantastic work of the groups that have been surrounding the club, most notably Sell Before We Die, which is a group who have, in such a short space of time, created so much creative protest but non-violent protests, which is the key to this. Now, Reading, in the past number of seasons, have had 16 points deducted from their total. Now, without the points deductions last season, they would still be in the championship. Rewinding a little bit further. So, of course, Reading were owned at the time by a Thai consortium. Um, and that was in 2017. Now, Reading were having a very, very good season that year under Yap Stam. And the club managed to get themselves into the playoff final. What's really strange about this is that Dai Yong was at this time, at the start of 2017, bidding for a stake in Whole City. He attempted to buy the club, but he failed on a number of checks. And the Premier League rejected the offer. The bid was $130 million. Now, to be honest, that's something that whole fans probably at the time were a little bit confused of because they weren't particularly happy with their owner. But, and a big but, whole city fans got off lucky. Dai Yong then turned his attention to Reading. And... You couldn't blame, you know, him turning his attention to Reading. Reading were a team that were having a successful season under a well-known manager, managed to get themselves into the playoff final. And it was on that week of the playoff final that Dai Yong completed his stake in Reading Football Club. Since then, of course, if, if Reading had beaten Huddersfield Town in that final at Wembley, it could have been a whole different scenario. But probably not. And I'll explain why. Because Dai Yong, of course, after failing to get Reading promoted, went and spent a hell of a lot of money on players. Players that didn't live up to their potential. Now, of course, we've highlighted on this show before Everton and what they've done in the past and how much money that they've spent but this was a real crisis this was and i'll explain why it was a crisis because dai yong isn't somebody without money he went into the football club with his sister and you know he's worth one billion dollars or so we think and we'll come on to so we think and his sister is worth $1.2 billion. So there's money there. You would think that these two people would be something to propel Reading into the dizzy heights, firstly, of the Premier League. Firstly, they, they had quite a decent starting point because as playoff finalists who had been beaten on penalties, you'd think that they'd be right up there. Wrong. What they did... Of course, they sold during that summer Danny Williams and they spent money on players which they shouldn't really have been spending money on. Now, going back a bit further into the seasons that Reading were really successful, Reading was successful back in the Steve Koppel years and also Alan Pardew as well. Of course, back in 2001, 
Reading were really, really, really struggling to actually get out of that division and managed to get into the playoff final with Walsall. They lost that one as well in the Millennium Stadium. But then the subsequent year, they went up in second place behind Brighton and Hove Albion. Then Alan Pardew decided to leave the club after a very, very successful season, managing to get Reading to the playoffs in effectively what was a championship, of course, Division One at the time, where they were beaten narrowly by Wolverhampton Wanderers, who eventually did end up winning the playoffs that year. Steve, uh, Steve Coppel come in from Brighton, and he did a remarkable job in getting Reading to the dizzy heights of the Premier League. And he didn't do it with loads of money. He did it with shrewd buys. He bought in players like Dave Kitson, Leroy Lita, Kevin Doyle, Bobby Convey, Glenn Little, Marcus Harneman, Nicky Shorey. The list was endless of the players that Steve Koppel entrusted. He was buying lower league players who then propelled themselves into the top flight with a record point total of 106, which still stands to this day. Reading also nearly got into Europe the following season, and it was only due to the last day that they didn't. But of course, the following season, they were relegated. Reading were owned by Medeski throughout that time, and were managed shrewdly, and of course were promoted again under Brian McDermott. But this is where things did change, because John Medeski sold the club to a Russian billionaire, we've heard that before, um, called Anton Zingarevich. That didn't come through. Medeski was lumbered with this club until he sent sold out to the Thai Consortium. And to be fair, Medeski didn't really make the greatest of sales of the club. Let's be honest. Um, the Thai Consortium were okay. They were fine. They weren't brilliant. They did sell a lot of the areas around the ground for redevelopment, but they didn't do a bad job. But Dai Yong, on the other hand, has been catastrophic for this football club. And I'll explain why. So £200 million he has spent on players, which, of course, didn't hit the dizzy highs. Of course, that is akin to Everton, akin to a lot of clubs. You know, a lot of clubs like Manchester City, even though they have got the success, have got, you know, embargoes off the back of that. Everton have got embargoes. You know, there is a number of others in the Premier League which are being quoted. Um, but Dai Yong has effectively run this club into the ground. And how he's done that is by bad investment, bad suggestions. You know, Sel before we die said that his ownership, even with the best intentions, was an unmitigated disaster. It's quite true. He's probably listened to the wrong people throughout his time at the football club. And we now find the Reading Football Club in the situation where it is now. Dai Yong, you know, I'd say successful businessman. And how he made his money is quite interesting. He made his money building shopping malls in underground air raid shelters. Now, because of the tax, you know, above ground, he didn't have to pay as much tax underground in China. So it was a little bit of a loophole that he found. And quite a clever loophole, to be fair. There is worrying signs, though, and there was worrying signs throughout his tenureship at the football club, which will hopefully be coming to an end. And this is it. A couple of years back, you know, he had three football clubs, Beijing Ren and KSV Roselaire. Now, both of those clubs have now been dissolved. They don't exist. They've gone for good. And that's a worrying sign. 
We know it's because Dai Yong's got money. You know, he's a man who, you know, should be able to, you know, fund three football clubs. He's got billions in the bank. There is a lot of questions about this. Looking at the pre-tax losses, you know, on up to 2023, the EFL requirement is actually 13 million on that. But Reading is 146 million. 123% of the revenue is going onto player wages alone throughout that time. Now, Dai Yong was a chairman who offered so much for Reading fans, but has delivered very little. And Reading were deducted more points at the end of the championship season last year. Now, without those deductions, Reading would have survived. It was a six-point deduction. Now, after that, Dai Yong, you know, has really shown what he's all about. Because HMRC, in June 2023, issued a, HMR, a winding up order against the football club. Now, HMRC orders are normally delivered three weeks before the winding up order is presented. So he would have been well aware when Reading were relegated from the championship that this needed to be paid to HMRC. But even more worrying things have come out. In September of 2023, he failed to pay player wages. And it was determined by the EFL, and it was a one-point deduction at the time, which then grew to three points extra. It was suspended, um, so four points in total, that 125% would be deposited into a UK bank account by the 12th of each month. Now, why I say that is that Dai Yong and the Chinese government have actually, the Chinese government have changed things of getting money out of China. Now, what that means is that it's a bit more difficult. And sometimes payments could fail when leaving China. That's fine. That's understandable. What isn't understandable, though, is why those payments weren't made by that date? Why were the payments not made by the 12th each month? And this isn't the only situation. There's been a number of staff left leaving the club, including Eddie Znisweski, who is a well, well-known coach. The academy is down to its bare bones, and it looks like the club are going to lose the Category 1 status academy that Eamon Dolan works so hard to keep up. The club have had all the great work that has been done throughout the years, undone by one man. And so before we die, you've got to give them full credit for what they've actually done. After the HMRC winding up petition, they initiated, and it started with a number of protests, um, which then led to tennis balls, protests walking from the town all the way to the stadium. In Parliament, the British government are now passing legislation to prevent what's happening at Reading happening again, and are citing Reading as a the case study for this. So, Dai Yong has already killed two clubs. And you'd think that he would want to get some return. A while back, it was announced that Dai Yong was trying to sell the club. And Reading fans started to feel a little bit more optimistic about the future. However, it sounds like that this is just a bit pie in the sky. A group were selected as preferred bidder, and it did look 
like the purchase of Reading Football Club was going to go through. Until what a lot believe is Dai Yong changing the goalposts again. And this is a bit, you know, which, you know, really stands with me is that Dai Yong has changed the goalposts on a number of occasions at Reading Football Club. It's again been announced that, and we've, we're now on the 14th of January, that player wages have not been paid, that that money was not deposited into the account. Player wages were only paid because, thankfully, the sponsors, Select Car Leasing, stepped in. They didn't have to, but they did for the love of their football club. And it all come to a head the other day. And how it come to a head was that the January window opened. And Mark Bowen is the CEO at Reading Football Club. Ruben Sellers is the manager. Neither of them appeared aware of what was going to happen next. Tom Holmes and Nelson Abbey were effectively sold to Luton Town. Now, of course, these aren't completed deals, but who accepted it? Well, also at the club at the moment is a Dai Yong Pang. Now, Dai Yong Pang wrote a statement, you know, on the Reading website a little while back, you know, understanding fans' reasons that, you know, it was difficult times and, you know, that Dai Yong was doing everything he could for the club. Well, it all seems hot air if Dai Yong Pang has decided to actually go above the heads of both the CEO who's been put in that position. He's been put in the position to actually oversee the incomings and outgoings of the football club and the manager. And of course, it would have been, it should have been discussed. If a bid from Luton Town had come in, what should have happened is that both Mark Bowen and Dai Yong Pang should have spoken to the manager and then agreed what was going to happen next. That's the logical things ways happen. Now, the problem is, is if these players are sold, which fair play to them, they seem reluctant to do so. What happens to that money? Because Reading are in dire straits. According to The Athletic, the heating is completely off of both the Medeski Stadium and the Bearwood Training Complex. The players are having to cook microwavable meals after the contract was cancelled with the catering company. Now, the catering company, it's believed, and again, it's stuff that I've seen online, are owed a lot of money by the football club. And who is responsible for sorting that out? Of course, Dai Yong. So it all comes to a head in the game against Port Vale. And it was a sad day for Reading Football Club. You know, seeing a thousand fans on the pitch, it was probably more, but the reports say a thousand, so we'll go with that figure. Seeing a thousand fans on the pitch is not what you expect. It's not what you want at any football club. But it shows the togetherness of the Reading fans and shows the togetherness that the fans will do everything within their power to actually get Dai Yong to sell the club, which he's been promising for so long. At this point, it's asset stripping. You sell Tom Holmes, Nelson Abbey. There's also reports Lewis Wing could be on his way and a bid is likely to be accepted for him. There is a real, real ownership problem at Reading Football Club. 
There's some positives in this story. And one of the big positives is Reading Borough Council. What they've done is they've protected the stadium. Now, what that means is that the stadium needs to be used for sporting purposes. So effectively, Dai Yong could sell the stadium, but it's not worth anything to anybody else because nobody can build on it. Nobody wants anything to be built on it. It's John Medeski's legacy. It's the football club's legacy. It's where I used to go as a young child going to watch football matches with my granddad, my brothers, my dad, and with the Reading crowd, which have been, in fact, very, very supportive of what has happened at Bournemouth in the past when I first moved down here. You know, the Reading faithful have always been supportive and accepting of my situation, my preferences, and what I do. Doesn't mean I don't love the club any more or less than I used to. So that's why I'm making this stand. There's also talks from the Sell Before We Die website that hopefully Woken and Borough Council, because of course the Bearwood training facility is within a different council, could also be protected. The EFL suggested a month ago that Dai Yong was to be banned from sport for 12 months. So what this would mean, he would be disqualified. He wouldn't be able to have a day-to-day running of the football club. Now, there's good and bad scenarios in that. Now, the good thing is it will hopefully force Dai Yong to sell the football club. However, looking at the accounts of the Ready Sports Management Group, who actually own both Bearwood and the Badeski Stadium, the Select Car Leasing Stadium, it looks like those companies are in quite a bit of debt. So what is the scenario now? Now, if both of those elements are protected, what it should hopefully mean is that Dai Yong has no value to himself personally in owning the football club. The stadium is protected. It might be his, but he can't really do anything with it if there's no football club to fill it. The training ground is still his, but again, he can't do anything with it if there's no football club to fill it. Basically, all he'll be left with is Reading Football Club as a name. And that in itself is possibly a better option. Now, the good thing with this is if those are protected and he is disqualified this time because the EFL need to wake up, they need to do something because this isn't the first time. It's not going to be the last time. There is going to be another club. And as the Manic Street Preachers once said, if you tolerate this, then your children will be next. And it's likewise, if football fans tolerate what is happening to Reading Football Club at the moment, then who knows who's next? It could be any team across the league. You could pick a pin-up. You could throw it. And it could be that team. It could be any team. What Dai Yong needs to do is to sell the club. However, there is also other scenarios which might happen. And if he is disqualified, it is very, very possible that the football club will go into administration. Now, this is a very different scenario to what we've seen in the past. Let's look at the scenario at AFC Bournemouth where there was no money. That's a very different scenario to what is happening at Reading Football Club because Dai Yong and Dai Yong's sister 
have money. They have money that they could invest in the football club, but they're choosing not to. They're choosing to asset strip it and murder a football club. But there is a lot, lot more to this as well. So one thing that I did want to bring up was how this is all set out and how 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 the money is effectively, you know, brought together. And this is actually from one of the Reading forums. And this was on about Reading Sports Management. So the ultimate holding company is in Hong Kong. As with all Chinese companies, though, this is via a company based in the Cayman Islands. The June 2022 accounts clearly state that all the assets are being used as security for loans. The Bearwood training facility has a charge on it from the Bank of Bangkok. Shortly, the June 2023 accounts will have to be filed and it's likely to show a far worse position. Hopefully, fingers crossed, the club will be sold and to a proper owner by that time. It goes on, suspect that any sale of the club is being made more complex by what's invisible to the eye. Dai's own personal money can be written off. Other creditors whose loans are secured to the company's assets will require either repayment or the new owners taking on the debt, which potentially makes the club worthless as it stands. And that's really worrying. So it's not worthless to just die young. It's worthless potentially to any other investors. Investors might then therefore wait and buy the club from administration. Now, the question is, if the EFL disqualified Dai Yong, it's a very different scenario to a situation that other clubs find themselves in. Because if they disqualify him, they're effectively pushing Reading into administration. Of course, they were the ones, let's remember, who authorised a takeover of Reading Football Club when Dai Yong was actually determined that he wasn't fit and proper p- person for whole city. So the Premier League rejected him and the EFL accepted him. And to be honest, that's poor management from the EFL and not doing your due diligence. And that could happen to any club across any division. And that is really, really worrying. So it's not worth anything potentially to anybody at the moment. They could come in a new owner at this point in time and just be lumbered with the mess and the shit that Dai Yong has actually set out. At the end of the day, it is probable that Reading Football Club will go into administration, but will potentially have a better future rebuilding rather than Dai, you know, selling out to somebody who, again, could well be a crook. Let's be fair, since Dave Whelan left Wigan Athletic, they've been in a similar boat, similar sized club, where they have been in a merry-go-round with bad owners. One other thing that I do want to bring up, though, is that Dai Yong seems to be, you, you know, I said that Dai Yong has got money. Well, has he? Now, I'm not going to read all this out because it is quite lengthy. And of course, the pronunciation of names is going to be very, very difficult. So please check the description area for a whole list from Mike Gao. Um, and you can find him on Mikey Gao um, on X or Twitter, or whatever you call it nowadays. So please do check that out and read that for yourself because it's got some really interesting information of why Dai Yong might not be worth what we think he is. And that there is a lot of debt circulating around and therefore there could be some real problems moving forwards. What happens next? Hopefully, fingers crossed, this will initiate the EFL 
and of course Dai Yong to start moving towards a sale of Reading Football Club. The football club have been a pinnacle of how a good football club is ran for so long under John Medeski. And it's only because of Dai Yong, this charlatan who doesn't know how to run a football club, who has trusted the wrong people across the game in really ruining A, his reputation, but B, the reputation of Reading Football Club, and C, putting Reading into a terrible situation um, that they find themselves in now. Who knows what is going to happen? The EFL, though, one thing I can say, should not, and this is should not, put any games behind closed doors, like has been suggested in some media outlets. No way should the EFL deduct Reading any more points for this. This is making a stand. These are real fans who've gone on the pitch and protested at the ownership because at the end of the day, that is one game. And how making that stand for one game is better than losing your football club for a lifetime. And therefore, that's why I wanted to make this video. Like I say, this situation is not going to go away. There will be more videos on this. And I would encourage all Reading fans, by all means, if they do want to give their opinions to me, to get in contact. Please, please, please do get in contact because it's a club that I care about immensely. And yes, this might be a Bournemouth channel. But at the same time, this is a football club that I grew up watching all those years ago. Grew up, you know, watching the good times, the bad times, you know, the the defeats, the wins, the games where you thought you had no chance, but then you did. That was a football club, and it was a great, you know, upbringing that I had watching that football club. And that football club cannot die. And regardless of rivalries, you might be an Oxford fan watching this. You might be a Swindon fan. You might be an Aldershot fan. No doubt, there'll be lots of Bournemouth fans watching this. But you could call Reading your rivals. And Reading could call you their rivals. But without football clubs, rivalries don't exist. And the fabric of the game is being destroyed by people that shouldn't be running football clubs, that shouldn't be owning football clubs, like Dai Yong. Dai Yong doesn't care about Reading Football Club. He cares about himself. He doesn't care about the staff. He doesn't care about the players. He doesn't care about the manager. He doesn't care about English football. He cares about making money for Dai Yong. And likewise, I think when there is a disqualification of Dai Yong, which I would suggest and really recommend to the EFL that that happens now, regardless of the consequences, regardless of administration. You know, if administration happens and Reading are relegated into League Two, at least there is still a Reading football club. Just with one without Dai Yong, which is all that Reading fans want. You know, if this continues any longer, you know, Dai Yong just plods along, doesn't play, pay players' wages, doesn't pay the manager's wages and the CEO's wages and all the staff who work tirelessly to build that club to where it is. is. And those people past and present, you know, who have made Reading Football Club, the club it is, you know, a club that used to be the staple of how to run a football club under John Medeski. That's what the EFL need to do it for. They need to do it for Steve Koppel. They need to do it for Brian McDermott. They need to do it for the late Eamon Dolan, who worked 
his arse off to get that academy to what it is today and produce some great players for Reading Football Club. That's why I'm making this video. Put your rivalries aside and football needs to unite to stop another disaster happening. Because, as like I say, and as the Manic Street Preachers once sang, if you tolerate this, then maybe your club might be next.